Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to be having a look at CCI or Cloud Consumption Interface which was added in 8.16.2. Now it was previously a product as part of vSphere Plus, one of the many gazillion offerings that VMware had. Uh, obviously after the Broadcom acquisition there's been a lot of consolidation to having the VCF platform focusing on one thing and aligning in one direction rather than scattergun approach as it previously was. Because of that we've been seeing a lot more integrations and capabilities that are being added out of the box uh, in things like ARIA and CCI is one of those. So CCI for all intents and purposes is a way to consume supervisor services. So supervisor services or supervisor cluster was released project Pacific way back in 7.0 of vSphere and it added the Kubernetes capability that's built uh, as part of the, the platform, the vSphere platform. Now when you set up supervisor uh, something that's been there that not many people use is a whole bunch of services. So one of those services is the VM service, so you can create VMs via Kubernetes. Uh, you can create Kubernetes clusters or TKG clusters via Kubernetes. Uh, you can also do a bunch of other services. So MinIO released a service as part of the, um, part of the supervisor services to be able to do MinIO clusters. Uh, as well as, you know, I think there's certificate services, there's some DNS services, things like that, right? So uh, more and more capability is going to be added into that. And one of the examples is the uh, private AI and the NVIDIA Enterprise uh, Foundation uh, offering. Now that is all available out of ARIA. So basically catalog items, uh, consumable like workspaces, work desks, being able to consume the uh, NVIDIA Enterprise services uh, for AI ML capabilities, right? So that requires CCI to be there because it consumes and uses the supervisor services. Now, and as I said, there's going to be more and more offerings coming up in that space and CCI is going to be that link into that world. So let's dive in and have a quick look at the CCI that's capability that's there today. Now it is a 1.0 uh, integration there is a few things you need to run so you actually got to do a bit of configuration through Kubernetes actually or through kubectl anyway uh, connecting into the CCI and creating a SSO uh, connection so basically you're taking my user that's logged into ARIA and passing that through into vSphere into the supervisor services to be able to get access to namespaces and stuff like that All right so let's have a quick look so under vSphere if we actually go to our um, workload management, so this is the Kubernetes side of the fence, we can see they've got a C CCI service available. So that's the SSO, that's the communication between ARIA um, and uh, vSphere. Now CCI previously was part of the SAS ARIA, it was actually built on ARIA, so migrating it onto on-prem obviously wasn't that hard. But when we do integrate it, so there's a few things that you've got to, you've got to run. Uh, some of those create regions. Uh, and if I just actually go to assembler, we can see we've got supervisor regions and you can see I've got a demo lab um, and I've assigned it to a project. And you can go here, you can see that we've got the cloud consumption interface docs here. It's pretty well, it gives you all the Kubernetes things that you've got to run um, uh, to be able to create the region, create role, role bindings, associate the supervisor with region, those sort of things, right? Um, so let's go back. Uh, so once we once we've done the done the setup, it's actually all available through Service Broker. So under the we'll see this supervisor namespaces construct under here, and we can go into here, uh, and it's going to give us our supervisor namespaces. So when I can actually create one now, I can self service that supervisor namespace, uh, and essentially I've been given a bunch of classes. So I've actually pre configured these classes, and as part of those setup or that documentation, is you create these classes and think of these as uh, pre configured uh, catalog items or flavors for namespaces. So this contains things like you know what your uh, catalog items are going to be, or what your sorry what your content sources are going to be, what your VM classes are going to be, those sort of things, how your pod limits and all the rest of it. So basically these are these are templates uh, that are predefined that you can self-service and consume. And if you go into here, everything's sort of done for us. So we've just got to choose our region of which I've only got one as you saw, uh, and we give it a name. So I'm not going to do that. And if we just have a quick look uh, back here and go, there it is. So this is just a basic example, there's obviously more more, more settings that you can set, uh, but you can see that I've set up the content sources and storage classes and that sort of stuff. 
uh, that are already there and then given it some expressions, some environments for testing. So this basically will determine placement um, of that namespace as an example. So let's uh, go back here. Uh, I won't actually create one because I've already got two here, but let's actually go into here and you'll be able to see that I've got uh, virtual, you know, a bunch of different cards. Uh, virtual machines, let's have a look at that. So this is, for all intents and purposes, this is a CCI UI, right? So it's using ARIA as that consumption mechanism uh, for the UI, but predominantly CCI is designed to be driven by command line, by kubectl, uh, to be able to provision and manage resources. But this is just the UI component to it, you know, which is handy having both. So we can see, I will actually show the TKG cluster VMs that are in here as well, but I'll hide them because I don't accidentally delete them or do something dumb. Uh, but within here, we can see that I've got a bunch of VMs. Now I can actually go into these VMs uh, and I can, you know, attach a volume to it and I can power it on and off. That's pretty much the extent of what I can do um, from a day two. So a lot less capability, a lot less flexible um, when it comes to, I guess you could say traditional VMs through ARIA or through vSphere, but they are designed to be deployed as a modern app capability, uh, meaning that you're probably only gonna destroy it and recreate it if needed. Uh, you rarely do much else on it. So you can see that that's on and all the rest of it. Uh, and if we actually go into here, they will be located under the namespace. So let's go to inventory. Uh, that namespace is this one. So the 212 in, and you can see that the VMs are there and you'll see they'll say develop and manage, but I can see everything else that, you know, they are attached to, right? Um, so let's go back in here and let's actually just create one, right? So let's go back to virtual machines. Let's create a new, so self-service. So it's taking, obviously I can only see based on my user account what I what I can see, right? As an example. Uh, so I can give it a name and auto generates a name there for me. I'll choose my VM image. So this is obviously determined based on the, the content catalogs um, that you have uh, that's available. So I've just got the two in there. And if you add additional ones to the or existing, they'll automatically populate. Uh, and we've got our name, our classes or our uh, basically our flavors here or our t-shirt sizing uh, with what we want to do. Uh, I'll just choose best effort small. We've got our storage policy, whether we want it powered on. We can do advanced settings. So for example, if I want to attach a persistent volume, I want to add in SSH keys, I want to do add attach, create a load balancer and attach the VM to it, uh, or I want to bootstrap something. I want to use cloud in it or Windows sysprep as an example. Um, I don't, I'm not going to do any of those. Let's just keep it simple. Uh, and I'll go back and just hit review and confirm. Now, see, so I got that, and you can see on this, on the um, on the right here, is that I've got um, uh, the YAML file, the Kubernetes file for it. So I can download that or copy it. I'm actually just going to copy this, and I'll show you why in a bit. I'll we'll copy that, uh, and I'll deploy that VM. So that's gonna that's gonna kick it off. There it is. There why why V nine eight. Um, so that's going to start creating and we probably should see that actually um, come up here soon. Oh, there it was. <laughs> Just as I refreshed it. There it is. So it's sitting there and it's going to start creating and we can see it's fetching a bunch of stuff and deploying a template at the moment. Um, so if we go back and this is, we'll let it, we'll let it go. Uh, what I can do now is I can go, well, actually, let's take that YAML file that I just had. Right. Um, let's, this is the previous one. I'll copy that. So that's a YV98. So let's just put 99, All right? That's all I'm going to change. Uh, and I'll save that. Now, I can go into Kubernetes and we'll see here. Oh, let's just clear this so we can see what we're doing. So we can log in to here, so we can use our token, our refresh token if we want, or we can buy login username, so I'll just start from scratch, login username, um, type in the password, uh, he's gonna log in and gonna give me a bunch of CCI. So CCI by itself is that's where you do the admin work uh, from, a, from a context, but where I wanna do is obviously I wanna log into my uh, project, which is uh, project CCI is the ARIA project and the namespace is my namespace, right? So you've got CCI, the project that I'm working in and the namespace I want to deploy stuff into. All right, so I can switch to that. Uh, and then just 
as simple as do kubectl apply and then my YAML file, right? Let's do that. And it's going to create that. So I can go back and look there. There it is. It's already kicking it off. You know, it's counting up there, 10 seconds. Uh, and same thing is we'll actually see that populate in here and eventually it'll power on and, and do its thing. Oh, just there it is there. All right, great. So that's all passing through. It's all working as intended. And I can actually go in here too and I can, um, you know, get a bit more. I can open the web console, for example. So it's actually not too bad as it's... it's creates the uh, the pass through for you so there it is there's my there's my web console I uh, come up and I can use it so it's just another way to be able to access this uh, or I can go into here um, and I can delete it and boom you know uh, it will go it will disappear all right so that's virtual machines that's been deleted that's good uh, and the same thing Kubernetes grid clusters is we can go into here uh, we can have a look at I've already got some clusters there, but we can have a look at creating one. Um, and you go through the motion of uh, the configuration. So your, your cluster type, so it gives you a, a cluster type. So we can go, you know, use that, that's cool. We can do custom configuration. So custom configuration basically allows us to select the Kubernetes or the Tanzu Kubernetes release, whether you want to use, you know, Entray or Calico, um, what our siders are going to be, what domain service, persistent volume class, um, you can say what, how many replicas and that you want, you know, your VM class, you can use storage classes here, uh, whether you want bump to a photon, so I'll use photon, I want to attach a volume, uh, and then our node pools, uh, is go through here, uh, select the different, um, configurations for it, uh, we'll go next, yeah, finish, great go next and then we can create and you actually see that it's actually built this yaml file for us as well so i could download that copy it i can use that i can deploy it through the command line just like i did before with the vm uh, as an example i'm not actually going to create this because i'm running low on resources so um, let's just discard the changes there and go and have a look at one that we've already created so i can have a look at this uh, you can see you can download the kubeconfig file to get access to it um, I can actually edit this, so really the only differences here is I can do control plane, so I can choose how many replicas and um, change the replica account and change the VM class. And same with the node pools, is I can go in here and change the replicas and the VM class and I can add a volume to it. Um, but outside of that, that's pretty much um, the most I can do uh, from the UI, uh, as an example. Uh, so if we go back, and in there, so volumes again, we can create a volume, um, same thing, it will give us the ML file, we can go through a bunch of stuff. Um, we'll actually be able to see uh, any volumes, so if we've actually created volumes as part of our deployments, they'll show up in here already, uh, just like the VMs show up in the VMs tab from the Kubernetes clusters, and just like the Kubernetes clusters with the network services, as an example, will show up in here too. So you can see there are two different cluster control planes there, load balancer that's been set up, and any VM load balancers. So obviously they're the Kubernetes ones that are built as part of the Kubernetes. Um, but if you, when I did the VM and I can attach a load balancer, and create a load balancer with it, that would show up in here as well. Or I could just create a load balancer if I want to as well, <laughs> right? Um, cool. And then we've got our VM images. You can't actually do anything in here. This just shows you what images that you have access to based on the content libraries that you have. So you can see I've got a lot of images. Uh, obviously when I went and chose a machine, um, I only had the, or the VM, I only had those two. And that's because it actually filters out all these and it only gave me these two here as part of the VM service. The rest of them are all but Kubernetes destroyed um, VMs. So it filters all them out, which is pretty cool. So I guess at the end of the day, that's really um, CCI as it is today in 1.0. And again, I'm really excited about this because these, you know, we would never have seen this traditionally um, if there wasn't a laser focus on providing this best-in-class platform um, rather than you know bespoke tools trying to do their own thing um, I'm actually really excited about CCI I, I see the I see the benefits of both this way of provisioning and providing UI obviously this will be predominantly command line driven um, dev tool driven uh, way of consuming resources or consuming services um, from the VCF 
uh, environment uh, where your, your, your traditional blueprints, and actually I should mention, I don't think I did mention, but these capabilities, these services will actually make their way to blueprints and be drag and droppable onto blueprints as well to consume those services through your traditional blueprints. Anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed. Stay safe out there. Until next time, see you, babe.